In today's video, I'm going to share with you why and how I've changed the way I approach my life forever. It happened about two years ago. Over the course of a few months, I began to get really, really irritable with people in my life. I'd be getting irritable with people that were telling stories that took too long, people that were taking up, I felt too much of my time, people that wanted to reach out to me to hang out. I just felt like, man, what a waste. I have things to do. I have, you know, things to accomplish. I don't have time for this kind of thing. So every family gathering, I would just feel like, okay, when is this going to be over? I need to go home. Every lingering conversation, when is this going to be over? I need to go home. I was caught up in this idea that this is just the way the world works. I need to optimize my time. I need to make sure I'm, be, I'm utilizing um, my time and energy in the most effective way possible. Otherwise, I won't succeed. Otherwise, people will pass me. Otherwise, I won't be successful. These were the fears and this was the mindset that was leading me to just really not be present in any of the situations or relationships that I was involved in. I would cling to my phone and to the news cycle thinking that I would miss something that would happen that I could make a video about going to church on Sunday but feeling like I couldn't be involved in anything extracurricular because that would just take too much of my time and energy away from what I was most important which was doing what I needed to do to make it, to make sure that I could provide, to make sure that I could live, to make sure that I could be successful and that I was doing enough. I was hustling as hard as I could, caught up in a hurry, and I was hoarding what I had because I was scared I wouldn't have enough, whether that was time, energy, money, and it goes on. One time I verbalized to a friend that I was scared of finding peace. I was scared of finding peace. Why was I scared of finding peace? Because I felt like the moment that I had peace, my productivity would stop. My hustle would stop. My hurry would stop. And that scared me. I said, you know what? I'm kind of glad that I don't have peace. I'm kind of glad that I... I feel this this uneasiness within me because it, it drives me to do more. It drives me to produce more. It drives me to work harder. And that's what's important. Now, I realize for those of you who don't relate to this sentiment or mindset, this feels like an insane way to live your life. <laughs> this feels like an insane way to approach anything, especially as somebody who calls himself a Christian. But for me, my hurry was all driven out of insecurity. It was driven out of anxiety. It was driven out of worry. It was driven out of fear. And it would take me quite a while to realize that because for so long I thought I was being responsible. I was being a good Christian. I was being a good, responsible man. But what I realized was I was compensating for my own feelings of inadequacy, insufficiency, insecurity. And I was trying to cover that up with, I'm so focused on work. I'm so focused on what I can produce. I'm so focused on becoming something in this world that drawed me away from the relationships that I had. It drew me away from actually being present in my community. It was handicapping any kind of momentum I had in making real impact one of the most impactful verses to me is one that I've read often, but it really never sat with me. It never really hit deep within me. And so maybe I'll read it for you and you'll feel the same way. This is from Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I would say that and I would say I believe that but at that point in my life I would I didn't know what that meant my yoke is easy and my burden is light well right now my burden feels heavy okay so Jesus I want to give you my burden but at the same time I'm scared of letting that burden go because it it actually motivates me it actually pushes me it actually causes me to continue in the cycle of hurry that is actually a coping mechanism for uh, for the fear and the hurt that I experience in my own heart. So it kind of eases me in some way to know that I'm caught up in this. It goes beyond this even because I not only had a problem with slowing down my life and being present in the moment and, you know, uh, actually find peace, right? Peace. Uh, I had a problem with other people slowing down their life. I would, I would think, man, you know, that's good. I'm glad that they're slowing down life because that makes me, that means that I'm getting ahead. Okay. Oh man, they must be, they lay, they must be lazy or they must not be, um, you know, very productive or passionate or they don't really care or maybe they're just privileged. That's why they can slow their life down. It wasn't about 
them being lazy or being privileged or um, being not motivated, the fact that they were slowing down their life. It was actually that they had different priorities than me. They had different priorities than me. And that was a hard thing that I had to understand. This was a kind of peace and a kind of contentment and a kind of um, slowness and, and, and just a presentness that was really attractive to me. I would look at it and I would think, man, like when I got past all the like, man, they're just, you know, lazy and whatever. Like when I got past that, I would think, man, like I want that. I want that. How do I, how do I find that? Because right now Christianity feels like work. My relationship with God just feels like work. It feels like a job. It feels like something I'm burnt out from. I just want to, I want it to be real to me. I want to be present with this. I want to be contented and at peace. And this was a long period of time where I was just asking God, God, can you just, can you help me be content with where I'm at? Can you help me give you the worry and anxiety in my heart that's leading me to just hyper focus on being successful or trying to bring myself some worldly security or or whatever that looks like. Those were the things my heart was fixating on because of the worry and anxiety that I wasn't giving to God. It was it has been a process of giving those things to God and say, God, I want to trust you. Can you help me trust you? Now to the practical aspect of what this actually looks like in my life, and I'm still continuing to apply what I'm learning and this heart change that's gone on within me to my life. But these are just a few of the things that I've done, my, that me and my wife have done to slow down our life, to be more focused on what is valuable and important to us on our priorities, as opposed to just filling our life with busyness and noise, okay? One of the main things that we have done, as simple as it is, is cook together. We love to cook together. We don't lo- like to eat out. We don't really eat out at all. And we just make it a point to spend quality time with one another, cooking in the kitchen, doing something active. But that has really grown our relationship and and it's caused us to slow down because it takes time to shop for the ingredients. It takes time to discuss, okay, what do we want to cook here? It takes time even in the midst of cooking to say, okay, you're going to add that. I'm going to add this, da, 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 da. We don't really cook with a recipe. So that adds a lot of creativity to it as well. But it, it would be a lot more efficient and sometimes even cheaper to get fast food. But we've chosen to do this because it slows us down. It causes us to be present with where we are and who we're with. The other thing that we've done is reevaluate our commitments. What are we doing just out of obligation or our lack of boundaries because we're just trying to be a people pleaser? And where do we actually see ourselves being the most effective? And where do we think God wants us to be? And this has been a hard process because boundaries are hard because you want you don't want to let people down. But at the same time, if you want to live a life that is focused on what matters, and often that is not just trying to ease people's own, you know, uh, perspective of you, right? If I want to try to please everyone, make sure everyone thinks I'm really awesome, then of course I'll try to do everything, right? Oh, wow, Isaac's so great. He, he does everything at church. Or oh, Isaac's so awesome. He takes on every responsibility at work. Like, no, right? That's not what I'm what I want to do. That's not part of my philosophy of living. And so what are the things that I think God would have me do? And what are the areas that I need to pull back to focus on what really matters? Another aspect is being okay with less. This is where contentment comes in. If you are constantly consumed with what more you can get and what more you need to be sufficient, especially as a man, um, what more I need to provide my family, I need to get them a better house or a better car or whatever else. And we've talked about this channel uh, before, but these are the types of things that that can fuel discontentment or I need to, you know, have what uh, Sally across the street has or I need to whatever, you know, do I really need those things? Well, you don't when you stop comparing yourself to other people. You you don't when you value God's opinion more than other people. And you don't when you realize that less is actually a blessing. Jesus wants less for you in a lot of ways. He wants less of the world that distracts you from himself. I highlighted this a little bit at the beginning, but I believe one of the reasons that we are so we are so allergic to slowing our life down is because there is pain and there is healing that needs to take place. If you are consumed in hurry and not being present, then you don't have to address those things in your heart that are deep wounds, that are painful. Um, I know there's been difficult times in my life that I didn't even want to give myself time to really think because it was too painful. Because I couldn't process the things going on in my own mind, so it was just better to distract myself. 
And this is a lot of what was motivating me to just hurry, just, just be consumed with hurry all the time. But as we're looking to live a slow Christian life, a present Christian life, what are we going to need to do? Some healing work. And for you, just like me, that might require getting somebody else involved, maybe a close friend, maybe um, a mentor, maybe a counselor, somebody that can help you work through some of these things because, hey, it's hard stuff. These are deep wounds. And especially if you've been hurrying and you've been pushing that down and suppressing for many years, it's going to bring some difficult and painful feelings up in you. But healing, that healing work is necessary. Bring that to God. Tell him what you've experienced. Know that he loves you. Know that he cares for you. There's so much more to talk about, and I'll, I'll explain more in future videos. But I just want to end with this. Imagine you were spending a day with Jesus. What would that day look like? Do you think Jesus would be, um, you know, frustrated in traffic because he wasn't getting to work? Do you think if somebody cut him off, he'd be absolutely pissed and he'd start yelling at the person in front of him? Do you think that's how he would respond? Do you think he would be anxious or worried about, oh man, I need to do this or I need to do this or I need to do this? Do you think he would get frustrated at you for not working fast enough or hard enough? Do you think he would um, be irritable with the people in his life when they're taking too long to tell a story? Or he would be looking at his watch when, um, you know, a friend that was in a difficult place was taking up too much of his time. I picture Jesus, and I believe this is consistent with the scriptures, being content, being at peace, at rest. He, he doesn't have this heavy load or burden on his shoulders that's causing him to act irrationally or be consumed with panic or hurry or anxiety that's motivating to live this fast-paced life. He wouldn't say, oh, that's just the way the world works because Jesus does things differently. And I believe that's what he calls us to do. Thanks to everyone who supports on Patreon. It is a huge blessing. And if you'd like to support the ministry, click the link in my description. I hope you were blessed by this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And until next time, God bless.